Welcome to Black Gods of Yahweh Media. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Pazat Bain Mats. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. How do we love Yahweh? With all our minds, with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our might. Praise you, Yahweh. If I have a bowl of soup, you can have half of that bowl of soup and anything else. And he who turns from the law, their soul is turned away. Praise you, Yahweh, Yahweh. And praise you, Yahweh, Beit Nun Sophie, you, Yahweh, Selah. Now you can look at this picture, image, and you can tell what direction this lesson is going to go. There is a big problem in America and in the rest of the world. It is the rise of the LGBTQ, gender benders, and homosexuality. I've seen so-called educated people on the internet and even mainstream television make a claim that the Bible does not speak directly about homosexuality, gay, and lesbianism. And that's a flat out lie. It is referenced in sodomy and Sodom and Gomorrah and the city of sin. Let us go to Genesis 13 and 13. Let's take a look at Genesis 13 and 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord Yahweh increasingly. Let's take a look at Genesis 19 and 24. Then the Lord Yudewave Yahweh rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord Yahweh out of heaven. So these were the perpetrators in the city of sin in Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to take a look at that definition, Sodom, and where it derives from. This word Sodom and sodomy are one and the same and are intertwined together. Sodomy or burglary, not burglary, Burglary is generally anal or oral sex between people or sexual activity between a person and a non-human, such as animal and bestiality. But it may also mean any non-procreative sexual activity. Any non-procreative sexual activity. Originally, the term sodomy which derived from the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in the book of Genesis, we just read that, was commonly restricted to anal sex, sodomy laws, in many countries criminalized the behavior. In Western world, many of these laws have been overturned or are routinely not enforced. A person who practices sodomy is sometimes referred to as a sodomite. Now, let's look at a second literary witness. New World Encyclopedia. That was Wikipedia. Sodomy. Sodomy is generally anal sex between people or sexual activity between a person and a non-human animal bestiality. We just read that. Which is derived from the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. In chapter 18 and 19 of the book of Genesis. Same. Now I want to move down to terminology. Sodomy refers to what was and is in some societies considered 
the deviant sexual behavior of anal sex. Alternatively, sodomy refers to any sexual interaction between members of the same sex. The term comes from the Hebrew Saddam, meaning city of sin, featured in the Bible in Genesis. The term may include several sexual acts other than cordial sex between a male and a female. This is speaking about homosexuality. This is speaking about bestiality. This is speaking about lesbianism. This is the Bible making reference to that. So those individuals who are claiming that the Bible does not speak about that are liars. Now, you may say, I know some people like this. They're nice people. You know, they're good people. They don't bother anybody. And this guy is just fear mongering. Well, I don't care how many schools say it's OK. I don't care how many corporations say it's OK. I don't care how many Christian churches say it's OK. According to the laws of the Bible, it is not. Let us dissect this particular sign that this young woman is holding up. Bottom left. It reads, I choose hell over a homophobic heaven. First of all, let's deal with that word homophobic. When you look at that short version or the prefix homo, of sexuality, meaning homosexuality, phobic, meaning phobia, that refers to fear. This is a political term. It is not actually a term that speaks about the definition of the word. The way it is used does not make sense. It's used to vilify and demonize those who disagree. So if I disagree with this particular behavior, or I choose to behave in a sexual manner that represents procreation, I'm called a homophobic or a homophobe. But if you dissect the definition of the word, it has nothing to do with how it's being used. Let's continue on with the most ridiculous part of this statement. I choose hell over a homophobic heaven. First and foremost, no one in heaven is afraid of gays, lesbian, and the LGBTQ. Because that's what this is actually saying. This is saying, I choose hell over a homophobic heaven. You're trying to say that heaven and those therein are afraid of gays and lesbians and queers. That is absolutely false. God, Yahweh, the prophets and the angels, they know that you're going to the lake of fire unless you change your behavior. So they certainly don't fear you. Now, I want to get into the part of this lesson that talks about those who are in fellowship and keep the company of individuals of the LGBTQ, gender benders and homosexuals. We're going to go to back to the King James Bible, And we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not equally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness. And what concord hath Christ, Yahweh ben Yahweh, with Belial? Or what part hath the unbelieveth with an infidel? Be ye not equally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? So in this society, When you're going to public schools and when you're going to work, you're going to meet and have to be around those who are of the LGBTQ, 
gender benders, gays, and lesbians. What does a person who believes in the Bible and who claims to not be a part of that type of lifestyle, why would you be in fellowship and company with those who do? I'm going to continue to show you what the Bible speaks about this. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 5, 11 through 13. 1 Corinthians 5, 11 through 13. First Corinthians 5, 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator. So your brother and sister cannot be a fornicator. It cannot be someone who is openly engaging in this type of behavior or a covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner. With such and one not to eat. For what have I to do? Judge them also that are without. Do not ye judge them that are within. So this is Yahweh saying, I'm supposed to judge or not judge you when you're keeping that company. You're within the company of those who are open sinners who have decided that they're not going to fight against their iniquity. But them that are without God judge it, therefore put away from amongst yourself that wicked person. That means that why do you have people over your homes? And why are you going out to eat with them? Why are you fellowshipping with people who are of the LGBTQ, who are homosexual gay and gender bender, and you're not living that lifestyle. That's what the Bible says. It asks that question. You are not to be around them outside of work and outside of school. You are not to keep the company of these individuals. You might as well be doing the same thing they're doing because you're going to go to the same place they're going. You are not to keep the company with evildoers and with wickedness. I don't care how nice that person is. Someone who was born a man who has decided to become effeminate is a sinner. Now, let's take a look at that word. Effeminate, because I'm going to go to the scriptures to find it. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God Yahweh? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Let's take a look at that word effeminate. Let's take a look at that word. We are here at Merriam Webster's Dictionary since 1828. Effeminate. Having feminine qualities, untypically of a man, not manly in appearance or manner, marked by an unbecoming. Delicacy or over ferment. Effeminate, an effeminate person. Let's look at synonyms and antonyms. Antonyms, manlike, manly, mannish, masculine. So this does not let lesbians off the hook. So when you see this scripture that talks about effeminate, referring to a man, vice versa, it refers to a woman who's trying to be a man, meaning date other women, dress like a man, act like a man, talk like a man when they were born a woman. (sighs) 
this behavior is something that is going to send many to the lake of fire. I have to testify that there are individuals out here who are putting members of the LGBTQ gender benders and homosexuals and lesbians above those who speak the truth of the Bible. Woe to them, to the servants of Yahweh. They're placing those individuals above them. And you're going to have to answer for that. Let's go to Proverbs 28 and 13. Proverbs 28 and 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Wow. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Let's deal with that. Covering a sin is to say, I'm going to sin and engage in it, and I don't care what God thinks. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care about anything except I'm going to do what I want to do, covering your sin. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. This is Yahweh telling you through the scripture that if you fight against these iniquities of the flesh, he will have mercy on you. So not only has he given you a diagram to live by, to save you, He also says that if you do not lose your will to endure, to fight against the sin of the flesh, he will have mercy on you. Now, isn't that a wonderful thing? But those of you who have made a choice to engage in this type of iniquity and lifestyle, and you don't have any intentions of changing, then you are on your way to the lake of fire. This is Black Goss of Yahweh Media. I want to say peace and Shabbat Shalom Aleichem. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Ben Yahweh.